Hey, what's up? Uh, this is Warren. Uh, we're hitting episode 300 soon. Oh my god, we're, we're at episode 298 right now. In two weeks, it's gonna be 300. I know, it's crazy. Um, something we wanted to do for 300 is kind of take a look back at some of our best moments in Soja Talk. It's 300 episodes means it's been we've been around for like six, seven years now. Oh my god. Um, so hey, uh, what we're asking from you guys is uh, some of your favorite moments of the podcast. What you, what do, was there a moment you remember? Is there a, a phony moment that you kind of look back towards? Um, whether you've been here for a week, a month, a year, all seven years, um, if there's a moment that sticks out to you as something that sticks out to you as a good memory, you know, uh, let us know. Uh, hit us up on Twitter or come to the Discord. Um, just there will be a channel for it. Just, just look at it. It'll be there. Um, if you don't know how to use Twitter, feel free to DM us on Instagram or, or Twitter and we'll get your message there. Um, yeah. Now, back to the regular episode. Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Soji Talk, your weekly shot of K-pop. We're coming at you with a super spicy episode 298, and we're recording on September 23rd, 2024. I'm Doug, and joining me today, we got Warren. Hey, what's up, everybody? And Anita. Hello. As a quick reminder, check out Soju Talk on your favorite podcast platform, sub to us on YouTube, join the Soju Talk Discord, and be a part of the nation. We've been gone for a week, you know? It was Chuseok in uh, mm-hmm. Korea. Happy so Chuseok. There was not a lot of music, so Happy we took a week celebrate. off. Hey, over Chuseok, I watched that idol athletic competition thing yeah. that they oh, used yeah. to do. They brought it back. Yeah. They ran it back. Mm-hmm. Um, Let's see. They did the normal events, archery, running, soccer they've been doing lately. The two fun ones that they added... Um, break dance, Yo, and then yeah. they added, and then they brought back ballroom dancing. Oh wow! You remember Zhao Ting won ballroom yes. dancing a while back, and it was very viral. Back in the day, they yeah. did break dancing this year. I'm not gonna spoil who won, but the group that got first, I might be a fan of that group now. It was very impressive. Oh, just wanted okay, to say okay. that, so you guys can look that up. What, but um, was there a ray gun though? They were they were way <laughs> better. They were, they were way better than ray gun. Oh no, I no want a ray gun. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was very impressive though. No one sucked. Everyone was good. There's been wow. some events in the past they did rhythmic gymnastics. People were dropping the ball and the baton everywhere, and I'm like, oh. what are we doing here? This time, everyone was competent. It was a it was a great showing. It was a lot of fun. That's great. That's amazing. Hmm. Yeah, more of that, please. Thank you. Um, in terms of after hours this week, okay. So we've been talking about this on the Discord on the last couple of episodes. We're changing Spice King segment with the Soju chart and all that. We're doing, um, it's more going to be based on a 0 to 10 scoring system for songs. So we're going to be making our scoring guide. So what does a 0 mean? What does an 8 mean? We're going to be doing that in the after hours this week. Um, So that's what's happening there. We'll probably talk about the whole process a little bit over there as well. So join us for that. And then finally, a big shout out to our Fuego patron, Bunny. Bunny used to be a patron, left came back oh. so they're back welcome good back. to have you back buddy welcome back thank you all right we got four songs this week because we took a little break we have txt yajun with a solo debut gum we have 50 50 re-debut sos p1 harmony sad song key pleasure shop let's start at the top txt yajun solo debut with gum he's from big hit that's all we got all right what a what a what a wild song this man chose for a solo <laughs> debut. Am I wrong? Like holy it's shit. It's very interesting. Yeah. When I first listened to it, I was like, what the f is this guy doing? But after listening to it mm-hmm. all day, essentially. Wow. Um, all day. You put up with that all day. I I redownloaded oh. the game Hades. It's it's a run based game, so you play till you die and then you get a little stronger, you do the run again, oh, that okay. kind of thing. Yeah. So I was sitting there all day. Mm-hmm. I kind of like some parts of the song. Oh, something, something about the dun 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 the piano. <laughs> it's very interesting. I'm kind of into it. Yeah. Um, gum is interesting, right? It's um, it's a it's, it's electro pop. It's bubblegum based almost. Um, it, it the core of it is hip hop music. Um, mm-hmm. I think a lot of what Yunjin does is very rap esque, uh, or at some points just rap. Um, it mm. kind of comes together. I'm getting like a hint of like hyper pop in here with the way they mix his vocals and whatnot. 
Um, it's mm. pretty atypical for K-pop or Main Street pop for that matter. But I don't, I don't hate it. It's it's kind of grown on me. I, I understand. There's a lot of conversation online about how terrible the song sounds. I don't, I don't think I quite agree mm. with that. I think they had an idea of what they wanted to do, and I think the execution was actually pretty decent. You know what I mean? You just got to figure yeah. out what they want to yeah. do. You know? Um, but just that's just my first impression. How about how about you, Anita? Um, I think for me the the instrumental aspect of it so like more of what you hear in the background i guess and in certain parts when there's no vocals i thought that was that was pretty pretty cool pretty interesting it's not what i was expecting do you like the whisper rapping the whisper talk rapping no uh, no not, okay. not that much so, wait, what's I'll, the, I'll, what's I'll the whisper this. talk rapping what are you guys referring to like just the rap it's in the first it's in the so it's in the chorus right when when they layer um his natural tone, right? With the higher pitch. Yeah, yes. Nothing. And to me, to me, what I was finding really hard to like get used to was the vocal. So right from the start, you get like uh like the key point of the chorus, right? So we start that the song off with that. And it's this very um uh, processed, like altered tone. I assume it's him. I'm thinking it's I him, th- just it pitched like up, wasn't yeah. they? Yeah, and I don't know. It just felt a little off, a little interesting. Because I, I, to me, to me, I feel like a solo song, a solo debut, should be showcasing the artist, right? All of their strengths, what are they great at, and like mm-hmm. that's the focus. It felt like with with this choice in the in the vocal processing, it felt like we weren't really showcasing him. And based on like the live stages that I've seen, he can't sing that part because it's it's pitched so up. Saying, it's it's, sa- it's sampled. So you're saying instead of making Yunjun show off his talent, they're like, let's make a vibe song, right? Kind let's just, of. Let's yeah. just dance around, do have some shenanigans, and call it a day. Okay. Oh, I mm-hmm. I get that perspective, but but here's the other side of this, right? This isn't officially speaking. This is not a solo debut. A very like using their terms this is Junjun's mixtape this is not a fucking mixtape it's a fucking single i hate it when k-pop companies do this but whatever they're calling it a mixtape why are they calling it a mixtape because this isn't an official first step into his solo career this is more of a warm-up this is more of a get ready mm. with me situation here you know um that's that's the vibe i was getting that's what I, that's what i'm getting at by them calling this a mixtape album um even though it's a goddamn single song. Um, if I go look in their entire press release, none of it says a solo debut. They just said, we unveiled his first solo track. We released his, his first, first solo project. project? Mm. Um, so that, to me, speaks to their awareness of how experimental this is and how much this doesn't speak to who want who Yeonjin wants to be identified as a soloist, but more so, hey, we have this cool thing that we tried out. Hope you like it. It's kind of experimental. It's kind of, you know, atypical, you know. What what y'all think? You know, that's that's what I'm getting at by them calling us a mixtape. Mm. Um which soft is soft debut then. <laughs> right. Which is where mm. I get, okay, maybe I should be a little more understanding of like this um feeling, you know, um it, it feels a little... I don't want to say short, but it feels light, you know? It feels a little it's light. Short. It is short. It, um, it's 243 in the... I mean, that's most K-pop songs lane. these days. Like, it, <laughs> nowadays, my two... My, my, nowadays, if I got to call the song short, it's like two minutes and like four seconds. Oh, my or some God. Shit. It's stupid. Um, but hey, it's whatever. I, I think, like, musically speaking, um, another thing people were talking about a lot was the chorus. Mm-hmm. And I think it worked in Doug's favor a little bit here with the piano, the bum 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 bum. He liked it. Yeah, it it kind of sounded like the the Jaws sound. Dun, 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 <laughs> mm, that was cool. I like that part. It it came out of nowhere. It was a it was very fresh. Yeah, it, it came out of nowhere. It was very creative. I'm not gonna lie. Was, yeah, I. You know, you know. Before we get to there, he says like, "Go hit that gum chomp chomp," right or whatever. Yeah. When I was listening to this, I had it as background at the beginning. I honestly thought it was G Dragon singing that part. Oh, I don't know why. Mm. It really sounded to me like Heartbreaker era G Dragon. I don't know why it did. Go hit that gum chomp chomp. 
I, I don't know. It, for some reason, it felt like that to me. Interesting. And, but I, I don't know. Maybe they're going for something like that. I really like the piano thing, though. I thought that was kind of cool. Um, mm. A lot of times these days, you see songs, you're like, all right, hear what they're doing in like 15 other songs. No one else has done that kind of beat with a piano lately, as I could tell. Right? Yeah. So, mm. It's pretty... It's pretty left field. It's pretty uh, left field isn't the right word, but it's it is alternative for K-pop standards. Um, Yeonjun is bringing this this attitude. He this kind of like fuck this kind of attitude, and that shows in the rap style too. Like it's it's very flowy. It's very groovy. I, I really like the way he performs it. Um, very rhythmatic. Uh, very groovy very much of I don't need to give a shit kind of rap and I, I think it really works well here with the style and you know and, and the genre and then the visuals um not a fan of the actual lyrical content because it felt a little shallow but I mean it's yeah, I think I think that's mm. fine it's whatever um so I, I think a, a lot of the things they did creatively make sense when you think about it when you put it together however it is not something that you typically expect in k-pop music so i you know that's there um it is also very it's a little extreme that's what i was trying to refer to when i said this feels a little hyper poppy the vocal chain oh. feels very you know sometimes yeah. you you know turns the that. front up I can see that. sometimes it's aggressive choruses sometimes it's aggressive autotune you know sometimes it's all of those um so i i get why people think this might be like bloody terrible as to you know quote them but i i think what they did was pretty nice i like it this is i, li I like i just like the brash attitude particularly towards the end of the music video there's like him dancing with the homies in oh, the yeah. hallway and they got this light going on he got the red hair he's chewing gum when he has like grills on i like the oh, attitude yeah. <laughs> he's showing there i thought it was a really cool scene um mm. overall i would be interested to see some more stuff from him honestly so i think they accomplished their goal there by releasing this for sure for sure it's mm. it's provocative it gets people going yeah. it gets people talking it's that's what we were doing that's what we're doing we're, we are talking and it's, there you go but, but is it a great song eh. <laughs> it's tingly it's tingly I, mean, I'll, I would give it a tingly just based on the piano thing i liked it that much yeah i mean for me uh i think i liked the visual aspect of this release and i think maybe now putting it in perspective of it not being like uh a very proper solo debut in their perspective. I guess I could see it as a, a more of a sampler. Um, but in the performance aspect, I thought he definitely killed it. I think the split move, because um, he does it in the live too, is very impressive. So the dancing, yeah, the yeah, performance the dancing aspect was amazing. Is really, really nice. Stage presence so, was good. Yeah, it's tingly for me too. I'm going to. Hi, tingly. Give a, I'm going to drop a hot take and say this is light spicy for me. Wow. Ooh. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. And, and I totally understand why some people don't like the song. I think that's very understandable. Um, but I, I do appreciate that it's doing something a little different. And I actually like what they came out with. I, I, I think the only things I have to nitpick about were like the lyrics and the fact that they called us a mixtape. This is not a mixtape. It's a goddamn single. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, let's whatever. move to an actual re-debut. We have 50-50 re-debut with SOS. They are from a tract. Uh, they're known for the famous song Cupid, obviously. And then they had like a pre-re-debut song with Starry Night, which came out a couple weeks ago. We did cover that one. But now we're at SOS. You know what? They tried to make a second Cupid here, guys. I don't know how to tell y'all. <laughs> anyway. yeah, they anyway. tried. They got the dreamlike thing. They tried to make it catchy. But this shit ain't Cupid. <laughs> Am I wrong? I don't think I'm wrong in that. No. No, I, I also felt that a bit. Man. It's like, um, it's like, uh, it felt like 50 50 Cupid without the garlic, if you know what I mean. Oh. I don't know. Like, I've, I've been trying to debate if the original 50 50 lineup had just released this as the follow up to Cupid, right? Let's say they did mm. in an alternate reality. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. How would I feel about that versus how I feel about this now that there's a re -debut? Do you know? Like, I feel like for me, it's, 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 it feels different. The thing is, here, the thing with Cupid is I felt like Cupid was very successful because it hit at the right time in the right era of pop music. In the right space, too. In the right space. And it utilized yeah. TikTok really well, or it happened yes. to utilize TikTok really well. Um, 
the issue is for me is that one uh internet era music has kind of moved on from this sound a little bit um k-pop mm-hmm. in general has also moved on from this sound a little bit mm-hmm. um and from a very objective standpoint i don't think the song is better than cupid to begin with um so you're left with the situation where i i feel like you came out with a decent song i don't hate it it's i think it's fine yeah um but it's but it's a re-debut right it's supposed I to be like a they new need, chapter they, they had a pivot i really think they needed a pivot and because Kina's the rapper i think we had to do something different you know i don't know i i mean yeah like i want to i mean yeah sorry you go you go no, 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 I was just gonna say that I I can't quite think what other sound they could have explored because when I hear the vocals, right, it seems to me that it goes pretty well. Like the very light, very dreamlike, very I would almost say easy listening type it's of pleasant. sound. It's pleasant and easy listening. It's, yeah, it's nice. Yeah. It's it's nice. You you could play this in the background in a coffee shop or something. Like I I can envision that, and I think. I think they still, the company I'm saying, the management, liked that. They they didn't quite get to explore it, right, because of everything that happened. But I don't know. I guess they they are running into comparing with the, themselves, really, and the one song that blew up. Uh, but I, I don't I don't really know what else they could do like i can't i don't have like a solution for what they should pivot to oh this will make a uh, great yeah. fake soju talk help me segment another fake <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe uh, here, here. i mean i'm not mad about it like the, the no, packaging, i'm not mad about it either right, right. yeah like, it's it either, not, i'm not ups- i'm not upset yeah. but like yeah I, I get it like it's not something outstanding they just they just, they just phoned it in honestly I mean, mm. the thing is, like, let's think about uh, let's think about it from our perspective for a second. Like, we review K-pop every fucking week, three or four songs, and mm-hmm. you know, some of these are great. Um, but when you do this so many times, one thing you pick up along the line is, or what something I've picked up along the line is, it makes. I start to understand the intention behind certain parts of these songs, why they were produced this way, mm-hmm. and this song was. It feels like, to me, my interpretation of it is that it feels very much like they were trying to replicate the formula behind Cupid. Take, for example, the second half of the mm-hmm. chorus with the synth chorus, the thumb, ba 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 bum, that little riff. That's fun. Mm-hmm. It reminds me a lot of what TikTok had in 2021. Like, don't get me wrong. It's been a minute, though, But it's yeah. been a minute. The drums are very inoffensive. It's like a watered down version of Cupid. Like you know what I mean? Like these there there are very stark hey, hey. mirror images. Hey, Cupid came out last year, by the way. Did it? Yeah, wow. February twenty twenty three. Well, very fast. <laughs> I mean, no, but I feel like it, it is true because when I when I think of what's going like what I hear on TikTok, right? Because that's really where Cupid blew up. Um, it's it's not that anymore. So it's moving fast, and it I don't know. It, it does make me wonder. Well, not only are they competing with themselves because they had Cupid and it was so big, but also now they're competing with the fact that maybe the market is not there's for a, there's, this sound. Yeah. And the fact is, like, you don't need to keep doing what is popular on the internet. Like, you can only do that so many times. It's boring as shit. Yeah. Don't do that. But if you've carved out a niche. You should be able to develop it. You should be able to take the next step. But here it feels like we just we're on the same we're in the same place where we left off of with Cupid, which could be fine. You know, like I'm I'm sure there are some folks out there who yeah. are enjoying the fact that we have another version of Cupid. But I for me, where I'm a little more neutral list for all of these artists, I, I feel like, uh, you know, if I want a Cupid, I'll listen to Cupid. I'll need another Cupid, you know what I mean? Like um so I think I was excited for what they could do next with the narrative behind them and the new members and what they bring to the table. But I'm leaving with, I'm not sure where they want to go from here. For, that's question number one. Question number two is, I don't know any of these members still. Like, I recognize Kina, kind of. The other folks, Chanel. 
I, I don't know who Chanel is. I haven't seen whatever the. the She's a new sh- new member. New member. Yeah. Okay. But sh- I know they're she was on that new, show. Other than they're new. That's true. All new. <laughs> I know there was hype around Chanel. I know she was on Are You Next. Like I I I know that. Yeah. But like. Uh, that doesn't say um, anything to me musically. Like, there's just four other people singing mm. with vaguely different voices. Yeah, I'm, it's like, and also these days, I'm being dragged too many ways by new groups. I'm trying to figure out who's in these groups right now. Mm. Like, I'm trying to figure out all the Baby Monster Kids names. I know, like, I think I know all of them now. Oh wow! I'm trying to figure out who, mm. trying to figure out who's in Bad Villain. I'm trying to figure out. I, see. I know who Isna yeah. is. Right? I'm trying. I don't. I'm meow. I can't name all of them yet. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, there's just a lot going on right now. And I don't think I got the time to figure out this 50-50 joint. All I know is as a consumer, I was like, all right, let's see what they're going to do with the, the, the re-debut of this group, right? Yeah. That's the same shit. It's, it, it's, it's like, I don't know. That's the point that's a little disappointing. On face value, the song is fine, right? It's mm-hmm. catchy. It's dreamlike. It's, it, fits, it fits the vibes of Cupid, that, that Cupid brought. But on the same, on the same at the same time, it's like expectations right or you have to weigh them in and i don't think they delivered on that that end um i'm gonna ignore the context of everything for a second and just talk about Mm. the song itself and one thing that stood out to me was the god the the percussion every offbeat on the verses other than the chorus there's like a little clangy hi-hat sound slightly pan to the right throughout the entire verse entire bridge do you guys not know what I'm talking about? I'm not off the top of my head, but go listen to the oh, song yeah. right now. Dink, yeah, dink, yeah, dink. Once you hear like the, it, the, the, the tops, the, it's like the top side of a symbol, right? The the one that's near the the pole. It's, it's dink, like a closed hi hat with a little rattle on it, or something. I don't know. Um, <laughs> it 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 feels like I'm eating fish, and I keep having to pick out little bones out of my mouth. You know what I mean? Like it sticks oh. out, man. <laughs> <laughs> it sticks out it's like little details like that it was like it, here's the thing i'm not like looking for details to hate on it's like i start with how do i feel about the song uh, i feel this way mm-hmm. why do i feel about the song then i have to go back and do research i have to look back listen to the song i'm like oh this thing keeps sticking out why is there another bone in my tooth you know what i mean like that's um i, I got i got a funny story about that's somewhat korean related about picking out bones out of your mouth what what that's so <laughs> random I was literally picking bones out of my mouth last week. One of our customers, um, he brought a smoked mackerel and albacore last week. And oh, he's wow. this guy. I've known him. Like, he's been coming to our, our family's business for like 30 years. His name's Butcher mm. Joe. He's a Polish guy. Wow. But he goes fishing on these expensive like overnight trips. And a lot of Korean rich ajashis go there. Mm-hmm. So they eat hue together. And he's like, he talks to my mom. He's like, hey, Chris, I got the gochujang. <laughs> It's just the funniest shit ever. <laughs> I got the like he, he knows all the Korean sauces and stuff because he eats way with old Korean dudes on a boat all the time. Wow, this is a funny connection. Uh, but yeah, picking the picking the bones out of your mouth, the hi hat thing in the background. I understand what you're saying there. I didn't notice mm. it too much until you brought it up, but now I can't now unhear can't it. Unhear I, it now. I think that's just uh. one example of where I'm like, this feels like a watered down version of of, of Cupid, which. If you like that style of music, I think that's all for you. But the fact of the matter is, I think K-pop's meta has moved on from that a little bit. Um, so, it, yeah, mm. I don't know. I, I'm feeling... Uh, the, song's, the song is fine. This is like the most tingly of songs ever for me. Same. This it's is just, very it's middle true. tingly. I, I I know we're not doing this yet. but It would the, be a straight five. This is a it five. Would be a sh- yeah, so it, our new scoring system, zero to ten, a five is like the most average of average songs. This is a five, if we were to do it, I think. Sense to me. And my, my most I could give it a six because I think enjoy it a little bit, but it's a, it's it's a, it's just I. Yeah. Um. Same. All right, let's move to the next one. We got a song that is not boring. We got P1 Harmony, sad song. They are from FNC. Um. Last three songs, killing it, jump and back down. A uh, quick quick note: if you are in Korea and you want to see K-pop companies, FNC is very easy to go visit. It's, it's an Apgujong. You could just walk by. And there's signs on the fence and stuff. Just saying. Also, the old SM building, the original SM building, is like one block away from there as well. Go visit mm. that in Korea. Um. All right. P1 Harmony. You know, I like the I like the energy they're putting out in this song. There's a there's mm. a, they, they going for it. Mm. I enjoy that. I can respect that. 
honestly, P Harmony's one of the, P Harmony this week got the most votes in terms of songs people wanted to be covered wow. on this on this week. Wow. Mm. It got actually no. I lied. <laughs> Yeonjun did. P One <laughs> Harmony came in second. Oh, that's, um, that's rare for boy groups. You it know? is for boy groups, right? Did they deliver on it, Anita? Did you? Did they deliver on the expectations? Mm. Well, I feel like I I listened to the song and I was reminded of where they were at with killing it, right? Because to me, this feels like we're extending a bit of that vibe, Correct. Um, even yeah. in some of the styling like we got some of that beat up slightly grimy styling which works uh, so I, I don't know to me it felt like those songs although they're not they're not connected there's no like connection visually or musically it felt like we're still writing a bit of that vibe i like it i like it i think the the energy they have is really really cool um the beat that they're using for this song I didn't know how to categorize it, but it had like some of the melody. I think it's piano. It sounded like a bit of like a Latin bass, like yes, a Latin there's, beat there's, type. There's some Latin, yeah. like a Latin seasoning on this one. Right, but it felt it didn't feel too obvious to me. At least I think the way it was blended in in the in the mix, like it's the, like the the drums, like is very more like more trap. I want to say I don't know. It felt like it was it was a good mix where it didn't feel too stereotypical or like too too obvious i don't know um i liked it i like the way that they 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 used it um it did feel a, like a li- a little one note at times but there's a bridge and then we have a little bit of a difference in the chorus so it was nice yeah there, there's a bit of like a, a latin flavor to this it's like when you get that goya sazon packet and you just dump it a little bit <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know exactly yeah. what i'm talking about that's what they did on this song <laughs> you know like when you make it the chopped cheeses and you put the sazon packet and then it gets good that's what they did here guys um i honestly think it kind of complimented here's here's the thing right i i just i just found the song to be fun it's 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 like a it's another it's a sort of brash song. I like the chorus a lot. I don't know. I don't know. It's like it's like it's a sad song, but it's ironically a sad song. You know what I mean? They're more just yeah. like, oh, I'm a sad boy. You know, not, right? not that sad. <laughs> but they're actually not right. Ironically, um, I don't know. Something about this energy is really getting me this week. Maybe it's just because we're in the fall and I'm expecting all these like gloomy songs to start coming out. But they oh. ain't gloomy with this one. Not quite, not mm. yet. I don't want to. I don't want to shoot any strays here. I don't want to sh- like sh- give shoot anyone with a stray bullet here. But I wish that ATs would be a little more reserved in the energy they're outputting, like P- P1 Harmony is doing lately. That's quite because a direct <laughs> stray. Oh. It's not a stray. It's a direct shot, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just randomly mentioned ATs. I kind of see what you mean, though. I kind of see what you mean. Because some of these AT songs, as of late, are just like out of this world like holy shit what are we doing right but i feel like human harmony has a nice level of energy going into this where it's enjoyable it's not it's not over the top it's it's very no. it's mm. very i don't want to say mild but it's very well seasoned yeah 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 <laughs> um i i think what sticks out to me in particular in, in that aspect is the rap uh the two folks here that are rapping mostly in talk mm. um and then i, I think that's jones up at the second verse yeah um, yeah pretty pretty straight pretty good not gonna lie i i didn't hate it i i think i was wishing that they had a little they were already given a good amount of time for k-pop standards they're given mm. like eight 12 bars i don't that's good but i mean that doesn't mean i want more you know like if they had gotten like 16 verses like they could have had like a good well-paced verse and i could tell they could do it so like props to them you know what i mean like that that's that's just the um song does follow like a trap structure it's got this i don't know i wasn't a big fan of the the toy the toy piano loop it felt a little really? yeah mm-hmm Feels like it. like um, feels like something I would get in like a K-pop starter kit off of like 2014, 15, like Block B. To That's B fair. Era. That's fair. Block B, right? Yeah. Block B. Yeah. Um, mm. I mean, like that's that's still a very relevant sound in boy group K-pop sounds. Um, 
But if I think about where P1 Harmony has been with like killing it, for example, which is their mm-hmm. I think like last track, um, it makes sense. I, I think it's pretty straightforward. It's pretty cl- clear where they want to be right now. Um, and I don't com- want to complain about that because I think they're on a good track. I don't think they need to like shift over and change or anything. And in fact, they have the right set of folks to do this kind of color. Um, and then, you know, mm. the, 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 fo- the folks who are supporting like, the vocal end and whatnot. Um, it's, is it like particularly creative? No, I'm not going to lie. It's, you know, it's, it's, I think it's fine, but you know, um, I do like the aspect of like this being an upbeat, sad song because I will. I think that's a hill I will die on. I think like K-pop is best when it is sad as shit, but we're dancing about it. You know what I mean? Oh, like my, sad lyrics, but very upbeat. Yeah, like my favorite <laughs> '90s K-pop song is like the song yeah. called "Ezang" by Cool, which is like a song where they're like dancing very happily and they're like, "Oh, yeah. you cheated on me? How could you? You broke my heart. You're the love of my life." <laughs> <laughs> like that's the actual lyrics. So yeah. People in Harmony just has good vibes. I don't know how to put it, mm. right? The vibes are right with them. I, I enjoyed the song. Um Well I put it out. Oh, is it spicy for me though? Mm. I, I don't think so. Mm. I, I'm gonna make tingly. Yeah, tingly for you? Yeah, mid tingly for high, me. High high tingly maybe for me. I think the vocal the vocals in this song fit really well in my opinion like I, I i liked the mix of like the sound of the main vocalist with this this instrumental and i also really liked how they layered the vocals in the chorus so like they're they're doing the verse but then they have like some ad-libbing or some some vocals in the background that i thought mimicked the melody and i, I don't know i liked the way they did the layering in that section um but like I said, it did feel a, li- a little one note to me. Like if it was a little bit more. I'll pl- you know what? I enjoyed this one thoroughly. Um, out of the four songs I had on loop for most of the day, this was my mm. favorite one for oh, sure. Wow. I'll, put it, I'll put out a little spicy. Honestly, though, okay. hey, P1 Harmony's on the up right now. Um, they're doing they're good. One of, they're one of the few groups who the sales are increasing. Their first day sales were more than the sales of their last thing. That's good. Wow. They're they're oh. they're at uh first day sales were three hundred thousand something like that. Steady uptick. Wow. They're on the uptick. That's good. That's that's my ability. Um, all right, let's go to the last one. We got our boy Key, Shiny Key. Um, with Pleasure Shop, with S M Entertainment. Last two songs, Good and Great, Killer and Gasoline. You know, Key Key just wants to make songs for the H and M playlist, right? Like, <laughs> and I'm not mad about it. <laughs> I'm not mad about it either. I'm here for it. <laughs> That's kind of his mo at this point, right? Um, Anita, mm. pleasure shop. Yes. Interesting name. How do you feel about the song? <laughs> uh, well, no, I'm 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 already biased because I I I like Key, I like Shiny, but I also like this sound in particular, the house vibe, very uh, I like to like the runway type of sound. Deep house, um, deep house. I don't know, deep house. There you go. Uh, it's I don't know. I really liked it. I liked. I think the the synths here were really cool. That's what that's what caught my ear from the beginning. Like very atmospheric synths in the beginning, um, and. I don't know. I feel like it was very straightforward in in what it was trying to do, but I really liked the visuals for it in the music video because it had a bit of a, I think you would call it like a '60s retro futuristic vibe in like the furniture they use and some of the sets they had. Ooh. I don't know. I think it's a cool take in like the the futuristic aesthetic without it being like too too trendy or like trying to be like super modern. I don't know. I thought I thought it was cool. Um, I think they it did. I think they oh, call it retro futurism. That is that kind yeah, of yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think it works. It works with the song. It works with the with him as a as an artist. Uh, I think he sells it pretty well. I also I want to say that he has explored like different sounds as a soloist, but this to me sounds the most, or what I re- I recall or referenced the most to Shiny. I feel like Shiny has done this sound before. Yeah. So I guess to me, this feels very like easy to like see it together, him doing the sound. I feel like oh. this in particular is um, 
something SM likes to lean back into every now and then. This is like yes. the deep house, a smooth, somewhat refreshing kind of a sound. I'm thinking about mm-hmm. Four Walls. I'm thinking about um, yeah. Married to the Music. Or like, what's the other one from Shiny? You... <sighs> Um, view, uh, view, uh, uh, view, 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 view. Like I'm thinking about those songs. I'm thinking about the Rise Impossible, track. Impossible, Rise. Covered, right. Yeah. We covered earlier this year. Like all of these songs, I feel like speak to how SM enjoys leaning back in toward, in, into this clean deep house aesthetic. Um, one thing that kind of contributes to that is um, the synth. Like Anita mentioned, it's it's almost like a almost like a whirly type. Uh, electric piano, almost like a Rhodes. Mm. It's very smooth, very, very, very clean, very, very nicely mixed. Um, the, the and and I think a lot of the components of the song I like, like the bass. I think sounds really nice. The shuffle rhythm and the percussion once you hit the chorus, I think that's really cool. It's very, mm. it's very chill, um, but very groovy. All of this is very groovy. That fucking bass is mm. groovy as shit. Um, but if I had to complain about it, but like, yeah, if I had to, if I had to mm-hmm. pull out what I didn't like about it, is that I, I don't think it was really mixed too well. Um, I was having trouble mm. picking out the bass. I was having trouble picking out his voice. Um, it kind of sounded somewhat ethereal and dreamlike, and I think that's what that's mm-hmm. the direction they were going for. Um, but you know, depending on the equipment I was using, it sounded a little muffled, sounded a little muddy. Um, that. Mm. might have been a mastering issue mixing issue i don't know i'm not an audio engineer i'm just telling you what i'm hearing um so that uh, given that's where sm plays typically with this kind of sound like they, their mix is typically perfect very fine-tuned um it feels a little off uh, in that aspect um mm. and then the pacing was the other part i was kind of eh about or like Doug, i don't know if you felt this i, I think that's what you're kind pacing. of alluding to earlier but like once you hit the second verse after the first chorus goes on for a bit goes on for a bit i don't think it's actually longer it just feels like it's kind of just kind of going on um because i noticed in the pacing and there really comes down from the fourth chorus it, it, the the a lot of it a lot the energy of the chorus kind of maintained throughout the verse um and yep. i felt like that was a bit of a mistake in terms of pacing where it felt a little draggy and, mm. you know this is it, it is a repetitive deep house song. That's what house is, but it's also a pop song. It's kind of, you know, um, so, you know. It's a pretty smooth song. You it know? is very smooth, uh, very clean, very like, groovy. It's like a Jam- Jamba Juice smoothie type song. What? You know? Juice. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking of like stuff from the early 2000s that I remember going. Like, I remember when Jamba Juice first came out. It was a big deal <laughs> near, near us. Um, Wait, that hey, came he, out in the 2000s? I think so. Jamba Juice? Yeah, back in the day, I, I remember. Oh, I've never seeing... been. I just, oh. I, I just know tropical smoothie. No, J- Jamba That's Juice. That's different. It's different. I know. Yes. Okay, I know Jamba Juice was new because it was when I was tap dancing in New York, and there was one in Times Square, oh. and it was like the big, like it was there was a line out the door back in the day. Oh. Really? Wow. I had no clue. Yeah. Okay. I, Jamba yeah, Juice it opened was 1990s apparently... in in California. Yeah. So the early two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, and a big company acquired it in twenty oh in twenty nineteen. Yeah. No, that my timing is about right here. Guys, yeah. It okay, is. okay. I, I don't um, know. I thought it's like another McDonald's brand or some shit. Like I, you mean? like I have no clue. Whatever. Wow. It was smooth like a smoothie. Is what it I'm trying to like say. Like Jamba yeah. Juice in the '90s. That, re- that reminds me of like <laughs> mid to, mid 2000s because he himself is in a mid 2000s kick. I don't know if it's just planned, but on I Live Alone, which is one of the shows he's a panelist for, he had a mm. whole exploration of he went shopping in a certain district in Seoul and he was buying like Y2K cameras. And like a CRTV. Oh, that's, so, that's so trendy right now. Yeah. Yeah. He was really into that kind of really uh, hot stuff right now. And it kind of reflected in the song a couple. There was a couple shots that were like, okay, you're going for something like early 2000s Psy World days um, going mm, I on. I can here. see that too. Yeah. Overall, though, for me, I do kind of see what Warren's saying where it started off kind of slow. Then we had a house drop. And then we just kind of housed the rest of the way, right? Um, we were in a house. We never All left the, the building. We were there. <laughs> but I like this from Key. I like this more than his last couple releases, Good and Great, Killer Gasoline, because those mm. three kind of felt really, to me, like a tiny bit abrasive, like really in your face about it. Um, more intense, yeah. Yeah, they were a lot more intense. I think this is more relaxed, laid back. I kind of feel like it fits the vibe. 
people are really into Y2K sounding stuff. I feel like this has some of those uh, motifs going on. I thought it was I thought it was quite good from Key. I give it a high tingly. Um. What? Oh, you go. You go. Oh, sorry. I I I would go with the mid tingly as well. I I I think I I don't hate the song. I I would never skip it if it comes on because I like I I love the vibe of it. But I I feel like SM as a whole has put out better alternatives in this realm mm. of sounds. You know. Hi. I'm gonna give it a little spicy. I like this. Mm. It's a vibe. <laughs> what a what a good okay. week we're having. All songs tingly <laughs> at the least. One oh, yeah. person giving it spicy each, other than that's other true. Than oh my god! Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't talk about them. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. All <laughs> other releases during the break. Yayan of Lovely's released "Dance with Me." Ace released "Anymore," which is a part of their project "Voyage." Hwasa released "Na," which is essentially mm -hmm. a, a Psy song. So if you want to go listen to a Psy song while Hwasa yeah. doing it, go check it out. Pentagon Gino, so, uh, Gino solo debut, Teddy Bear, Infinite, Wuhan with Boyfriend, Kang Daniel, Electric Shock, Reseen, Pinball, which is a uh, double title track with Love Attack, the one we covered a while oh, back. Okay. Check it out. Hey, people are really into Reseen right now. I that's like this like one. The, Pinball that's is That's the current popular Dugu Girl group. Like, that's the mm. group right now oh, that wow. people are okay. into. Um, and then QWER released Sunny. I really like the song. Kind of sad we didn't get to cover it. Check out QWER. Mm. A great group. Um, all right, and I think Soyeon wrote the help write the lyrics for that one as well. She um, wrote and ah. did the lyrics. All right, Thanks. Spice King, all the way back on episode two ninety seven, uh, two weeks ago, Lucembol TTYL picked up its first crown. Second place, Day Six Meltdown. Third place, La Seraphim Crazy. The new candidates are the four songs we covered: Yojun, Gum, Fifty Fifty SOS, P One Harmony, Sad Song, Key Pleasure Shop. I have a chart. I am keeping Lucembo in first place. Wow. I think that this is, is the right a, choice. It's Good a job. great song. Yeah. I like me some Lucembo. Um, I'm very impressed. I think the management finally figured out what they're doing. I think we got to kind of keep doing this type of Luna esque, like glory days of Luna esque music. And I think it's great. We got to keep giving um, VV lines and we're good. We're good. <laughs> Second place, I got P1 Harmony. I am putting Ooh. P1 Harmony sad song in second. Nice. And in third place, I'll give it to Key. I'm putting Key in third place with Pleasure Shop. Nice. Nice, nice. nice. Um, I'll start off with first place. Um, I also have Usambo TTYL in first, moving up a spot. Um, yeah, I'm still having a really good time. If anything, I think I've gotten more into the song as time has passed. It's just really catchy, really fun. In second place, I'm going to put... Key pleasure shop. Um, wow. I I like deep house. I like this vibe. I think it's cool. Um, putting it in second for now. Third place, falling off a couple of spots. I still have a seraphim crazy. Wow. Um, crazy, crazy, crazy. It's been a minute. Um, but I don't know. It's, it's still fun. I think the repetitiveness has gotten to me a little bit. It has all the down. girls are girling, girling. But yeah, we're still girling. We're still fine. You're still good. Okay. There you go. <laughs> um, I also have a shocker on my chart that is Meltdown by Day6. It is nice. number one. Wow. I, I think this is shaping up to be one of my top 10 songs of the year. Very, very nice. It is. I, it, yeah, yeah. It, no, it's really good. It's, it's it, really good. It's very emotional. If you haven't checked it out, because it's not your typical K pop song, you should check it out. It's a good song, <laughs> period. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's good shit. Check it out. Uh, here's another shocker. I have Gum by Yeonjun on second. Um, wow. I, oh, well, yes, you like this one. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Spicy. Uh, yeah, I was the only spicy. And I, I know that's a mm. hot take. I, I know most of the internet is hating on this track right now. Eh. I can see the appeal to it. Yeah. You got Yeonjun. Yeah. Gum, 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 gum. Oh, wait, that's the Jesse song. That's Jesse. <laughs> 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 but you know what? I can see that. I thought about that too. Gum, gum, yeah. gum, gum. It's, um, I understand it's not for everybody, but. I think if you appreciate what he brought to the if you can appreciate what he brought to the table, it's it's really nice. Mm. Um, he had a I think they had a direction where they wanted to go. They had a clear goal, and it was mm. really executed really well. What can I say? Um, third place, <sighs> I gotta go with Pleasure Shop from Key. There you go. Based on my personal preference towards this sound, I know I shat on it, but I mean, like, <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> groovy deep house is groovy deep house. I ain't complaining. Hey, Soju Talk Nation and the Gochu Gang voted. Third place. They s- oh no, third what? place. La Seraphim, crazy. Oh, wow. They still got it in third place. Second place, mm-hmm. Key Pleasure Shop. Hey, there you go. Nice. And in first place, Lucemble TTYL. Wow. As a result, um, third place is day six via Warren's first place. That's crazy. That's <laughs> crazy. Second place is Key with Pleasure Shop eight points. And in Ooh. first place with 15, just though if Ward for some reason had put this song in first, it would have entered Hall of Spice because it already has one crown. Oh. Um, but now yeah. it only has 15 points is Lucemble TTYL. It will have to okay. try to win next week to enter the Hall of Spice. Oh man, next week Boom. is kind of the deadline. It literally is the I'm deadline for yeah. the current <laughs> format of the show. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Um hey, some of the things it's gonna compete with is NCT Wish, uh and Yenna are the two big competitors for Ooh, next week. Wait, Yenna's coming um, back? It's been a minute. Yenna's coming back. Um all right, we're at show winners. Anita hit us with the two weeks of show winners. Yes. Starting off, we have La Seraphim with Crazy. They won on Show Champion and then twice on M Countdown. So they have a total of three wins with this comeback. Then we have Day 6 with Melting Down. They had uh, two wins on Show Music Core. Congrats to them. And then we have Boy Next Door. They won on Music Bank and in Kigayo for Nice Guy. So two wins for that one. And then lastly, Bacon with Pineapple Slice. Won on Music Bank. First win. Nice. On Apple Slice. Um, hey, La Seraphim, right? I know people aren't, people seem like sort of into this song. Mm. Um, I know rumor, rumors of their demise is greatly exaggerated, though. I think the thing has like 800 to, 800k to a million sales at the moment. So if you don't like it, oh, too bad because it's doing pretty well. Um, yeah. Just, just wanted to point that out. Um, all right. After the break, we're going to do some news and events from the past week. We'll see you guys then. Three, two, one. Hello, Soju Talk Nation. This is Anita here with a quick PSA. If you would like to support Soju Talk K-pop podcast, please like, subscribe, or follow us on whatever platform you're using. Consider joining our Patreon at patreon.com slash sojutop or donating to us at paypal.me slash sojutop. On behalf of the crew and myself, thank you. Now back to our regularly scheduled episode. All right, we are back at it. Part two, Surgeon Talk, episode 298. We're going to cover two weeks of news and events. Um, unless you live under a K-pop shield or something. You guys saw this New Jeans live stream that happened on September 11th, right? Uh, uh, back then. Yeah. So basically, the New Jeans girls opened the YouTube channel and had a live stream. Oh, <laughs> they just decided no. to do it. <laughs> So here are some quotes. New Jeans during the interview. Quote, Minnie Jin is not only the person who produces our music, but is someone who makes New Jeans who we are. She is integral to New Jeans identity, and we all feel that she is irreplaceable. Damn. That's a direct quote. Boom. Mm. Uh, Next quote. One of the big things that came out was Hani stated during the live stream. Quote, on the fourth floor of the high building, there is a room to get hair and makeup done. One day, a group and their management passed by and we greeted each other. They came back and I heard the manager say, quote, ignore her. Yikes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, that was another quote. And then additionally, uh, the, the main thing right here. This is the crux of the, the thing. So Nujin said a quote, the adore that we want is an adore where the music production and company management are done by Minijin as the CEO. We make this request as the way to cohabitate peacefully with Hybe. If our message has been conveyed properly, we hope Bang PD and Hybe restore Adore to his original state by September 25th, which is in two days, guys. Thank you for yeah. listening to us. This is the crux of what this live stream was about, right? This is what they yeah. want. The, um, the sad part is, by the time this episode goes out, that ultimatum, that's the day. Because this is 25th by day. Korean time. And that's typically... Yeah. 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 Um, I did a emergency live stream on this 
uh, on the day our episode dropped two weeks ago, which I think was like like the twenty four September tenth, I guess, or eleventh, something like that. Um, this the highlight clip is on YouTube for you to view. It is our now second most viewed video on YouTube. Yep, you could find the full translation of the live stream, or you could watch Warren's video where he goes through a lot of what they said. I think both of mm-hmm. them kind of give a yeah. big picture as to what happened. I was just picking out like the main parts of it. So the main thing was they're doing a live stream. They want Minijin to be the CEO. They gave them two weeks to do it. That's essentially what this was. Um, I think if you can double click on just this, this layer real quick. I, I If you want the deep dive, like there's a video on it. Go listen to that. But the takeaway from that as to why this is the, the due date is 25th um, mm. kind of goes back to 50-50. Doug, do you know this? Yes, I watched your live stream you, video, Oh, thank dude. you. I appreciate it. Wow. <laughs> I watched the live stream for what I could, and then I watched the video in full. Thank you. I appreciate the yes. support. Please like and subscribe and leave a comment. <laughs> this is th- right here. This is what all K-pop says. Okay. Uh, by giving Hype two weeks to restore Minijin's position as CEO of Ador, Nujin's demonstrated their intent to terminate their exclusive contract. So people are wondering, why would they demonstrate that? And then Warren's going to say why it ties into 50-50. Boom. Back when 5050 was having their court ruling in 2023, the court came back and said, well, 5050, if you thought your company was violating the exclusive contract, you should have given them two weeks to fix their shit per your contract. Yeah. Per their contract, they should have given them two Mm -hmm. weeks to, you know, fix whatever they're doing that they're not happy about per their contract. Um, Now, a lot of the k-pop contracts with idols are written based off of a standard contract that exists thanks to tvxq um (laughs) so this has been the same seven-year contract that people use throughout these years um the assumption i am making as well as some of the other people on uh, on the internet are making is that this is a clause that's written into that and because 50 50 had that precursor nugens is now doing what 5050 didn't and giving their parent company two weeks to say hey you are not meeting our standards within the contract please Fix don't it. do that yeah so so basically the whole the whole thing about the two weeks is that let's say you have a contract with someone and let's say they're not doing their part of the deal um you can't just say well f this contract then um it, that doesn't work legally you it's have illegal. to give you have yeah. to give the other side an opportunity to fix what you see as the perceived wrongs or have a discussion about it. That's essentially what they're doing here. Yep. Um, so there's that. Right after the live stream ended, uh, the, the channel got deleted, you know, guys? It Oof, happened. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Uh, well, that, that happened. Um, yeah. So here's the he was the first, uh, the, the hype CEO, the guy they don't like because they want mini gin. Here was his comments on the live stream, right? This is the main the main thing he said. Quote, it will take some time, but we will stick to regulations and respond calmly. Hybe is a company which follows the rules and pursues precision management. Looking back, those who follow the rules always end up as the winners. Huh. Them. This, this is interesting because this is coming out first day at his job on the general shareholders meeting. Yep, that day. On September 12th. Um, so the next day he made yeah. the statement. Um, um, there you go. Uh. So there is that. And then during this whole stuff, Mini Jin apparently filed a court injunction to convene an extraordinary general meeting of shareholders and to re-elect internal directors of Ador. So on the legal side, right, Mini Jin is basically saying, A, we need to redo the internal directors of Ador so you make me the director again. And then eventually I want my job as CEO back as well. So legally, she's trying to push for this as well um behind the scenes mm. i don't know um and then warren mentioned to me to remind me so oh. at one point during while well, all this was going on right we have the new gene side with the live stream i respond mini jin's making moves behind the scenes to get herself back in the position she had there was like a article that was released on kbs right yeah um essentially this article claimed that mini jin told the new jeans girls to not do this live stream so, so okay, let, let me let me break it down. The the article said they got in touch with Minijin, and Minijin told the reporter, apparently according to this article, that she told Minijin's, don't do the live stream, 
Apparently, Minijin was claiming that New Jeans wanted to originally do a press conference like their producer has done. Um, and she told mm-hmm. him, don't do that. That's a terrible idea. Um, that article went up. It was published and it was live for about three hours before it was taken down. No reason as to why. No reason, no as, reason to as to why. why. Um, mm. What I can say, though, however, is that when that article was reposted across the Korean internet, uh, comments were not particularly pro minigen you, you, I mean, it's pretty obvious why. Yeah. Like, that sounds great. If you think about it, if girls claimed that Minijin had nothing to do with this video. Minijin came out saying, oh, I told them not to do it. You know, it... It's not impossible. It's not doesn't feel like a lie, but it feels like you know what I mean. Like it doesn't feel right. Um, I'm not. At least you knew about it. I guess yeah. What it implies. Right. I'm not saying like oh, Minijin is behind the camera. Like I, I, she has shit to do. She's not behind the fucking camera, guys. (laughs) Um. But you know, it it does say something. I think. Give me a second. I have the image of the uh, the initial like articles and stuff. Okay, oh. this was the thing that was on our Discord that I tried to access and then it was deleted after the fact, after the article. Do you want a picture deleted. of the article? I can find it real quick. People I don't need that, screenshot. but this one just says, yeah. according to KBS, Minijin's representatives revealed that they advised against the public statement made by New Jeans members during a YouTube live stream two days ago. They had, they had warned, quote, it's better not to do this. Um, so Now, because we are doing a podcast, I also have to mention it's very possible that this was a mistake and that's why he took it down. Yeah. 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 It has happened. So, but there was no clarification on the KBS side, so we do not know um, what that take was it with all the about. Folks. There was that. Um, we mentioned that, and then this happened, right? So Jungkook was <laughs> yeah. suspected to be supporting New Jeans in the conflict with Hype in the latest Instagram post. So he posted a picture of his dog, and then he put five hearts where they. Oh, you can't really. Let me zoom out. Oh God! It's not gonna it's let not me. Gonna, yeah, here I can. I can try to move it on mine. This is what happened. Uh, there we go. There, there we go. go. Yeah, there were five hearts with a with a flex sign, and it says "artists are not guilty." People are like, interesting. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. hmm. Well, considering those are considering those are the colors, you know, right? Um. So people were wondering about that. So I'm go back to where we were. And then Big Hit released a statement um, on Jungkook's latest SNS post. Quote, we confirmed with Jungkook that the post was made out of the idea that young artists should not be dragged into disputes and used as shields in any case. Okay. That was a statement. I think it's a then, good sentiment. I think, but, yeah, it's a very yeah. fair sentiment. And then he posted another picture of his dog and he wrote, don't use them. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so there's that level of this as well, which is interesting because he is a shareholder in Big Hit as a whole and Hive as a whole. He's, uh, he's what we call a uh, major stakeholder. He's, uh, mm. yep. yeah, I mean, from so a the concept- final thing. Oh yeah. So the final thing was Hive announced that they will respond to New Jeans request by the 25th. Quote, we plan to deliver the response to Nugent's request to Hybe to each member on the 25th. We will proceed in such a way that the details of the response will not be made public. So there I said, we're going to internally respond to their their um, their uh, their video, their live stream. Their requests. I don't know. Oh, yeah, their requests. That's it. The interesting thing here for me is that Hybe, has, Hybe has, so far this year, they have been a company that's been very public about their internal affairs little bits of investigation evidences they keep dropping here and there um maybe this is speaking to the way new leadership views their relationship with the media you know what i mean um that to me is feels like a good thing um so uh that's that's the end of this yeah um it is what it is we'll see what happens going forward I got one more hype thing, okay. but it's not new jeans or a door related. A man in his 40s was arrested by the police for breaking into the high building and staying there for two nights and three oh days. God. He was filming one of those YouTube that videos, long? 48 hours <laughs> in Walmart, you know? He was, he what? Was, no, no, that, that's thought. a joke. That's a joke. That's a joke. He was not filming <laughs> a video. He was it just hanging out. Beast. But still. It was Mr. He was Beast. filming a Mr. Beast video <laughs> yeah. at the high That's building. A long some, time. There was a security breach there. Some dude was hanging out, probably eating in the cafeteria, like hanging out, oh having a good time. Um, so that one happened there. 
The, the last thing from Hive is they made a $25 million investment in a mysterious company. It's a giant PR firm, and it's one and it's a PR firm that has previously represented Johnny Depp during his lawsuit with Amber Heard. Wow. Mm. So they, they, they <laughs> essentially have now contracted a giant American side PR company as well. Okay. Well, there you go. Uh, yeah, the reports are they bought like half the company. Wow. I don't know if they. Oh my god! Wow. It, yeah. Did they need to buy it? Like I don't know about that. It, yeah. I don't know. Right. Um. So we got a couple more lawsuit things. So Sugar, he got a fine of fifteen million one for the drunk driving incident. So that happened there. Mm-hmm. The next one, Tail, um, the former member of NCT who withdrew a couple weeks ago, um, has been handed over to the prosecution without detainment on charges related to sexual crimes. So that's an update to that one. And then the final lawsuit thing we got going on here, Attract, hey, 50-50, we covered them this week. Attract announced on its website that it obtained recordings of meetings that took place on May 13th, May 17th, and June 6th, along with other materials that show that Warner Music Korea, The Givers, and three former 50-50 members tampered with and and attempted to violate the exclusive contract. So somehow they got recordings of the meetings. That's so... I wonder how. Interesting. They're effed if they got like everything, Oof, right? Da, goof, da. <laughs> I wonder who leaked that, right? Yeah. It's crazy. So they're claiming Warner Music, the Givers, and the 5050 members attempted to violate the contract illegally. And they have recordings of the meetings now. Yeah, big oof, <laughs> that's like true. that's like it your is. biggest enemies planning to like F you over and then you get recordings of the meeting, right? Like <laughs> that's nuts. I don't even know how that happens. Um, so that is the end of the lawsuit stuff. We got more fun stuff. So the VMAs happened, right? Best mm. K-pop winner, Lisa Rockstar. That happened. Oh, um, okay. nice. Best group winner, 17. Okay. Ooh. And then we had push performance of the year was La Seraphim Easy. There was, um. Oh. okay, I can't say this meme out loud. There was a big meme that came out of the VMAs. About Che Won's haircut, you guys can look it up online. Uh, I am not going to repeat. I have come across You've seen it. it? Yeah. It's really funny. Um, yeah. There's that one as well. All right, next one. So, a Chinese competition show on Aichi TV, right? It's going to be called Starlight Boys, but the entire mentorship is all Korean K-pop people oh. for some reason. Uh, yeah, I'm recognizing some faces here. Big Bang Day song, Isungi, Kwonunbi, Hui, the boys, Eric, Stacy, Yoon, and there's an uh Isung Young, I think is host or something. Oh. Yeah. And then we have Che Young Jun, the, the choreographer. They're all a part yeah. of the show. And Hane too. They're all gonna be a part of this Chinese survival oh, show. Wow. Is that is that legal now? Can we I don't know. Can Koreans be on <laughs> Chinese TV again? Like that was a thing. Is it is it straight up gonna just be on Chinese TV or is it gonna be in is it gonna be on Korean TV just produced by a Korean com- I mean, uh, Chinese company. The, I don't know. The funny know. thing to me is like I'm looking at these posters and they have their names in Korean. So mm. I don't know. I don't know. I should have probably. Oh, you go, my bad. I saw. I looked up I heard a something. Bit. <laughs> oh no! It's gonna air on Chinese TV and SBS. Oh, so that's why there's a lot of Korean oh. people. Okay. okay. This makes more. I wonder if. Like, what's the breakup of the contestants? We don't know. Is it going to be all Chinese guys? Is it going to be Korean yeah, guys in there as well? Place. But this is going to be a pretty big show. Um, it's essentially the reboot of Youth With You, which is uh, one like the Chinese one of the Chinese versions Produce. of Produce, hmm. more or less. Yeah. It's one of those type of shows. But this is a crazy mentor lineup, is it not? Right? Um, mm. Yeah. There is that. Next thing. So The Boys reported to leave IST Entertainment following their contract expiration mm-hmm. in December. They said, they, they, some of the dudes were posting on SNS saying, we're going to stay together, but we're leaving the company. Oh. Oh, where are they going? IST right? Entertainment also houses um, A-Pink, Victon, The Boys, mm-hmm. Weekly, ATBO. Interesting. That's, that's I mean, they're known The Boys has a fair amount of following. They have a strong fandom. Maybe they're going to yeah. go find a new company for all of them? Yeah, so it's a subsidiary under Kakao. It was originally Plan A Entertainment, and then Fave got brought in. Cracker Entertainment, where the boys was, was also pulled in. So they kind of just pulled in a bunch of other labels, and it was like one of the Kakao labels. But these dudes are like, yeah, seven years, we're out of here. Peace. Okay. Mm. I wouldn't be. They're probably going to set up their own company. I would. I would guess. Uh, Right. Maybe. 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 So next thing, there were rumors of Joy leaving SM. 
This, oh. this is pretty big. Oh. SM stated that they are still in discussions with her contract renewal, but they have not denied the fact that she's leaving. Oh. I'm guessing for solo? We have no clue. Because a lot of these SM people are now leaving for the solo stuff, right? It is. Um, they are, yes. yeah. So we don't know to what extent. We don't know if she wants to leave in general or if she's just leaving for the solo stuff, potentially. Mm. But just know there's rumors out there. Um, next one, Jesse signed an exclusive contract with new agency and established her own label, Unny. This completely makes sense, doesn't it? I feel like... <laughs> I don't know. She it seemed like she didn't have too great of a time at P Nation, um, even though she's friends with Sai still. But setting up her own label makes sense to me. All right. Next one. Ihai, right? Right? Mm -hmm. She signed with uh, Do Over. Gray Code Kunz, uh, Uonjay are the co CEOs of that company, and she's joining them over there. This, uh, Isn't these all like AOMG people, right? So far, yeah. it is just uh, a bit of AOMG 2.0 situation. Yeah. Um, so that's happening. Next one, SM Entertainment, right? They have a new trot idol group coming called Mitro. Yes. A, it has Tae, uh, Yoonjae, Shohei, Chepyong, and Woo Hyuk. Oh. And they're between 26 and 32 years old. They're making yeah. a trot boy group. <laughs> Mitro. SM is also, they have a new R&B label. They're going to launch their first artist, Min Jiun, on October 4th. So SM is there. there this 3.0, they're doing everything now. Trot groups. We got oh. R&B groups. We're doing everything. Interesting. Lots There's of that. genre diversification. Next one. So, you know, with all the stuff that's going on with New Jeans right now, right? Mm. Danielle's older sister, Olivia, is going to make a debut oh. under new global mm. subsidiary Ampl Amplify. It has to be Amplify, right? Um, mm. That is happening. Okay. Wow. Very cool. Interesting. I'm interested in what kind of music she does. Next one. So you remember Gwyn Maya from back in the day, right? Um, she was on Produce 48. Oh, wow. That was a... Yeah, no, yeah. Was she on Produce or was she on... Um, she was on Girls Planet. Girls Planet. Girls Planet. That's where she's from. Yeah, but she's uh, she's going to debut in a group called Odd Youth. I mean, let me look up which company it is under. Odd Youth is T Top Media, T.O.P. Media. Okay. Hmm. She has been announced as the first member there. And then, hey, Anita, 17, Jung Han, first 17 dude going into the military. Um, yeah. He's going in three days, September 26th. 17 is starting their military era as well. It will be a long one. <laughs> Take your time. It's going to be a minute. Next one, Espa. They're going to expand the live tour parallel line, sync parallel line to North America, South America, and Europe in 2025. Oh. Essentially, Ooh. world tour is now happening for Espa next year. Mm. That's what it wow. sounds like. Mm -hmm. They will also be carrying out global activities with the release of their fifth mini album, Whiplash. So we're getting a comeback soon from them. Ooh. Uh -huh. I feel like it's that not is. been too long. But I guess we're getting Exciting. another one. There's just a lot and then of finally, comedy. Artemis, uh, the world tour, they added a bunch more dates. Latin America, Europe, oh, wow. Australia as well. So they are going all over the place. Yep. And that is the news. Yo, Doug, uh, next week. You forgot yes. the most important news. Which one? Your favorite bias from Produce 48 is joining a group. Wasn't that two weeks ago or did I just forget to put it? That was that was eleven weeks eleven days ago. It was eleven days ago? Yeah. Oh shit. Let me get the let me get the article here. Okay. <laughs> um so Hitomi is back, guys. Um It's happening. So she is going to be debuting in a group called Same Is it called Same My, my Name? Yes, yeah, Same My Name. Same my name, yep. Here we go, right here. Uh, what company is Say My Name? Let me look this up real quick. Say My is Name. This, is this the group? Maybe I'm mistaking it. It's the Kim that... Jae-jun group. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say. That kind of sounds familiar. It's the Kim Jae-jun group. It's under a new company called Encoded is the, the company. And it is run by Kim Jae-jun and another person. They opened in May of 2023. It's going to be the first girl group at the company, and Hitomi mm -hmm. is going to be the oldest member of this new girl group that's happening. Well, there you go. Wow. Look at Hitomi. Look how cute she looks. She's Come back. on, guys. <laughs> she's back. I'm surprised. I'm surprised it took this long, to be honest. I mean, she's I'll stuck just... around uh, AKB for a while. She's only 22, guys. Like, she ain't even that's old. not old at she all. Ain't even oh, old. Nah, Twitter's going to call her a hag. No. no, it's Hitomi. How could you look at Twitter this? Twitter's going to say, oh, which, 
How could you call this a hack? He is dying. <laughs> There's a 14 year old in this group. <laughs> oh my oh god. god. There's a 2010 in this group. Um, <gasps> Jesus Christ. Yeah, Jesus Christ. So that is, that is happening. Um, next week, in terms of music, NCT Wish, Super Junior DNE. There's a group debuting called Dragon Pony. Um, Banner, Wib, and Yenna. Dragon right. Pony. Is that a boy group or a girl group? It's a band. Oh. I think. Oh. It's an it's Antenna's new band. That's what it is. Okay. Oh. I mean, now, now that you say it's a band, I feel like it's weirdly fitting. Like, it sounds like a... <laughs> I mean, it sounds like a shitty band name that kids come up you know, with. You know, you know the thing I'm with K-pop? Curious. Like, I don't know if there's going to be a band band or a K-pop band. That's why I put them on That's the list. True. But I'm not really sure at the moment, you know? Could like, it a, could be either of those things. A CMU uh, and not, FT Island. Type. Yeah, I'm not too sure. But I was looking Basically. at the images and it's like, hi, it's hard to tell. They kind of look like they could be idly. <laughs> hard, hard to mm. tell. It it, um, it looks like uh, they remind me a little of Jannabi just by the visuals. Oh, uh, well, we'll see. We shall see. <laughs> um, oh, it's called it's called Dragon Pony, or is it because like that's their uh their zodiac signs for the members of this group. That's why. So that's how uh, Garage Band would typically name their. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure they're. I think gonna I think one guy was born in 2000. The other three were born in 2002. So it was year of the dragon and year of the horse. So that's why they're Dragon Pony. <laughs> All right. I, see. <laughs> I mean, it could have been All Dragon right. Horse. Oh, yeah. I'll stop. After the break, we're going to uh, try to figure out our new scoring guide for our 0 to 10 song rating system. That's what we're doing mm -hmm. after the break. So it's a really meta thing. If you were just here for the K-pop, leave now. If you want to see what we're going to do, uh, join us for that. We'll see you guys. Three, two, one. And here's an extra special shout out to all of our Fiesta Patreons on Patreon.com. Bagel, Charles, Cotton Ball, Ellie, Gogu Mama, Honey Pools, Liam's Games and Toys, NJ Parks, South Texas Once, Sue Sumi. And thank you for joining Soldier Talk, your weekly shot of K pop. Thank you, really. Special thanks to our Discord server mod, Jacob, K Music Air Day, Koala, Max, Tuggle, and Wolf297. After show. So, quick season, season 7 discussion um, before we get to the activity. First thing, a lot of people talked to us, uh, left comments about the news section, worrying about the news, saying that they love the news, whatever, whatever. Um, not whatever, whatever, but you know what I mean. We yada, hear yada, you. yada, yada, yada. We, we hear, hear you. you. News section is not disappearing. We're going to have two to three main topics each week, and then I'll run through some of the less important stuff. Um... But just know, like, world tours and stuff, I'm just going to say they have a world tour going to these continents. I'm not going to name all the dates. We're just going to try to shorten it a little bit, but you'll still yeah. get what you're looking for. Um, yeah. And we uh, get more discussion. Yeah. Yeah. yeah more more is, discussion so time. Less. Yeah. Running through. Let's just run through the show real quick. Big new releases. That's staying the same. That's fine. Right? Um, mm -hmm. Spice King is where the big thing is happening. There is no more Soju chart. There is no more songs versing songs from the previous week. That's not happening anymore. Um, the main thing we're going to do is every week we're going to assign scores to each song, 0 to 10. You guys, um, The Soju Talk Nation and Gochu Gang are also going to on our Discord, and we're going to average those scores. If songs pass uh, a 7.5 out of 10, they're going to enter the Hall of Spice. So songs are not competing against each other anymore. They're just competing against the rating system. Ooh. So that's essentially what we're doing there. Uh, Anita announcing show winners, that's staying. People like that. News, we just talked about that. And then the after hour segment is more or less going to happen like towards the end of the news section 
it's not going to be its own thing anymore. We're gonna less. we're gonna have two parts to the show now. Um, yeah, it's. I think it's kind of better that way. First part is pretty long. I agree. Second, third parts are pretty short. So, just one intermission, no two. I think that makes a lot more sense. Um. Um. So let's transition a little bit. So you're probably saying, all right, this scoring system I've been hearing about zero to ten. Um. Number one, we're only giving out whole numbers. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or ten. We're not doing any decimal points or anything like that. You got to stick to the number you're giving it. You just have to decide. Um, I think that's better because if we have decimal points, it'll get messy, things like that. Mm. Um, yeah. Do you have any other comments? No. This is the we got to make the rating system now. We got to come up with the system. So oh, as you can goodness. see on the screen, or you could just listen at home. A five has the descriptor average. What that means is we want the most average song you could think about. One that's like, eh, it's not bad, it's not good, to get a score of a five. Now, that might be a little low to some people, but that's the true average of a zero to ten scale, is it not? It is, numerically, yeah. It is, and I feel like it really lets us truly celebrate a song that's really good, you know? Yeah. Like, if every song is getting an eight out of nine every like then every song's good that doesn't really celebrate the good songs you know what i mean like and the the way voting is going to occur is that um we have a channel on our discord called music video uh what is it called music video releases every time a music video is put in there there's going to be a zero to ten little emojis are gonna pop up and you just click and vote so you're allowed to vote on every music Easy. video that comes out now mm -hmm. and then we're just going to take those scores for the songs we're covering um each week so now, now we're going to have an activity where you can literally rank any song, but um, we're only going to use the ones that uh, end up on the show. We're just going to try to foster that kind of, um, what is it called? Uh, culture on our on our Discord now. We're just going to have a voting culture. We used to back then. We're, we're trying to we bring it back. We used to back in yeah. the day, but I used to have to manually, manually like make the polls and stuff, but now we've kind of automated it, so it's going to be nice. Cool. Um, okay, so here's what we're going to do today, right? We have 10 numbers that we can give songs like a song could be a five like doug mentioned it could be average if it's a five the other numbers need a name we gotta give yeah. these names you know like if a song gets mm. seven what the fuck does that mean you know what i mean like we gotta give a clear-cut phrase or a word i don't know like i i love I saying spicy was... but like spicy is just some word we throw around you know like something a little more universal okay. I, I was thinking about it yeah. um warren and warren and i like on the fly kind of made up our descriptors oh, um, of some of these things should that I can pull that in real quick i have the images if you want them yeah put it in the uh, put it in the chat i'll put it into uh uh I'll, I'll put it on the screen oh, those were the, the the descriptors with we some just, examples right with yeah made examples. on the fly these were just made on the fly just for fun we were just trying to tell people um what, like just try to show people on the Discord what kind personal of personal opinion, we were guys. About. Just personal opinion, no hate. Yeah, the song. Don't take the song <laughs> into consideration. It's just our personal <laughs> opinions on those. We're not gonna put examples on the actual like rubric that we're making today. No. Um, no. Yeah. Um, you want to start from like the easier ones, like six. I feel like sixes would be a good thing to do. You know. I think six is just good, right? Yeah. It's, is that that's off, right? Right, Anita. Yeah. Good. 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 You, you listen to a song, it's like, oh, that was a good song. But I'm not like it's not the best song ever. I'll put that a six. That's a good score. In this in this upcoming thing, like a six is a good score. That means the song was a good song. Um, I want to think about five. Really, I want to think of six as a number that would give a song where it's like it's good. I would come back to it, but like I might forget about it pretty quickly. You know what I mean? Like it's for me. Like I would give the P1 Harmony song this week. A six. Wow. I would give the Key Pleasure Shop a six too. Same. Those are like mm. those are like good songs. Mm -hmm. Same. You know. Um, you want to move up a level? You got seven. The how, okay, Warren has the descriptor great. I also have it as great, so I guess it's great. Right? <laughs> okay, great. I, I have an alternative to great. Cause Very great, good. Great, great's just good twice, two times, you know? How about recommended? Like, oh. you would recommend the song you to someone I would song. recommend this song. I would recommend I like you that. check it out, you know? Yeah. Because yeah. okay, a while back we did a poll and people were saying recommend. that they check out the podcast. Or they check a lot of the people who check out our podcast don't check out the songs we review, and they hear us talk about it first. And if we're and if that 
um, <clears throat> prompts their interest, then they'll go check it out. So, like, mm. if you say seven and above, that's like, That's hey. true. That's true. I wouldn't tell, like, I wouldn't tell my sister, you got to listen to this key song. I wouldn't. This right. No. Nah, okay, I would, but. <laughs> then that would be your seven. <laughs> but, like, on my thing, it says my example for seven was Red Velvet Cosmic. I would tell someone, yo, you got to go check that track out. It's kind of weird and interesting. I would ask, yeah. have you heard of this song? Right. Yeah. Like, have yeah. you heard of this? Um, okay, so, do we want to go recommend or recom- or would recommend or recommended? Which one? I like recommended. That's like a, is that an adjective or an adverb? I, I do it. I, English I, is not I feel like, I feel like to make it easier, would recommend is better. Anita, you studied fit? English more than both of us combined in college. Would recommend would, makes more sense, I think. Right. Okay. Thank you for your, fit? is that always spell recommend? I don't know how to spell. <laughs> that looks right. I think. That's right. <laughs> Okay, all right. Well, well, it's for, to be fair, but, but to be fair, wouldn't you recommend the shit song to say, that? I'll check this one out? You know, like... Okay. Nah, I, I mean, I personally wouldn't, but... Would unironically recommend. Okay, basically, <laughs> it, would we rather put this recommend thing or would we rather put great? Like, what do you think is a better descriptor? I like... Okay, the, the reason I brought up recommend is because it serves a utilitarian purpose beyond us giving it adjectives. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I'm not gonna obviously do that for all ten numbers, but like, you think you think seven's like a threshold? Right? I feel like seven and above is a good threshold for what I think is like, hey, that was a banger, you know? Okay, mm-hmm. okay. Like typically, okay, for full transparency, like I have been testing this system for a while now. Every time I say spicy, it's a seven and above. Like gum gum today, that was a seven. Wow. Day six was an eight. Okay. Recommend. For me, okay. for me. All right, let's keep going then. Eight. Uh, I wrote. See, mine's too long. I wrote. I was thinking of you know that video we made where we gave our top ten songs of the of the first half of the year. We did, yeah. That's mm-hmm. like the level of song I was thinking about. You know, like oh, it sh- it should be in like the top ten songs of the year level. Should get an eight. Like I should only give oh, out yeah. maybe like twelve, ten to fifteen of those a year. Was my my thought process. I agree. Like I mm. said. I, I said the word example setter as in like yeah. it sets the example for like other folks in the industry. Like it's creative, it's you know does not skimp on the details. Um mm. I feel like the word we're trying to come up with is exceptional. <laughs> this is not the word we're trying to come up with right here. Exceptional. Oh, wow. Right? Ooh. I think that's the word we're trying to come up with. Let's keep that one for now. Right. Exceptional. Except, uh, they feel a little pretentious, but hey, you know what? Fuck it. Uh, <laughs> fucking dive but in. You know what I mean? Like that was like, you, you, so Warren said he wanted to give day six and eight. Would you consider that day six song an exceptional I song? I would say it's an exceptional song from this year. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Nine, I think is tough. Ten is much easier to give a descriptor to, I think. Le- okay, let's start with ten then. Why, why is that easy for you? I think you just write legendary. Like there's like. That makes sense to me. Yeah, same. Like the way I see it is, um, so in sports, right? This is, I like to use sports analogy because I, I know a lot about sports. There's a hall of fame, right? Uh-huh. There's a mm-hmm. hall of fame for people who've had tremendous careers. For me, nine and ten are the hall of fame, but there's a term for hall. They call it inner circle hall of fame. That's Ooh. a ten. Do you know what I mean? Ooh. That's the. That's what I feel like. Oh, 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 oh okay. okay. Uh, let me get this right. Okay, so like maybe, 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 maybe like. Um, Thierry Henry would be a nine, but a Messi would be a ten. No, I think Terry Henry is like a inner circle Hall of Famer. <laughs> Exceptional. Though. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, Van, Van, if there's a Hall of Fame for careers, like Van Persie had a nine career, Henry had a ten career. Oh fuck, Van Persie. But you know what I mean. That that's what I'm <laughs> saying. Two on my book. Um, no, I get what you mean though. I get what you mean though. Yeah. But as far as a word for nine, though, that's tough. I like, I mean, I like how what I, what I have in your example, Doug. Mine was song of the year contender. So that means I should give out like two to three of these. Mm. This is the best. I kind of like that idea. The thing is, okay, here's the thing. Shorten it. I, I know we're saying it as a more of a conceptual thing, but I'm worried people are going to say you gave it nine. How is it not song of the year at the end of the year, you know? Or like some people could yeah. be like, oh, like your song of the year, you gave it an eight back in August. How, you know what I mean? Like, I feel uh, like people would like 
some people might lean into that a little more than we intend to, you know? Like, mm. and I and I know you think that's stupid as hell. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I, I saw your face as I was saying. I know you. <laughs> um, Wait, what did you have for for nine? Bro, I came up with I words. because I, I said, well executed on every aspect, <laughs> plus something a little more. <laughs> I feel like at least my descriptor song of the year, Kennedy, kind of points to the fact that you should give out like three of these, you know, a year. A year. Yeah, you can't have like 20 songs of the you year. You can't have 20 songs of the year because I would say at most mm. five. Here, at he, most. Here's what I'm thinking about nine and ten, right? It's It's got to be good. It's got to be perfect. But it's got to be a little more. Mm. It's got to bring something a little more, whether it's like creativity or like whether it's something do some whether it's doing something that nobody else is doing whether it was like whether it had a tight budget and then was trying to play around a tight budget by doing something i got a word i got a word instead of writing mm -hmm. song of the year contender right because yeah. that might mm -hmm. be how about we have wait oh no i lost it i was thinking of it no go back <laughs> no, rewind the video no. rewind the video rewind rewind oh i was trying to think instead of instead of phrasing. song of the year I wanted to, to, I had a word in my head of like, this song represents 2024. You know what I mean? Like, representative. Ah, like, um, oh, exemplary. I had a, I, no, I had a term that was like, year defining. Year defining. Was, like, this is a year defining song. Like, this song mm. is 2024. Oh. That's what I mean by that. Like, this is a year defining song. When you look back on the year, you think the, of the this year. Song. This is the song I think about. Or or songs, it could be more than one. Yeah, like these are year defining songs. The definer. I like that because then we're not limiting to one. Like for me, twenty nineteen, right? I think of fancy and feel special both as year defining songs. Wow, you right. know, I do. I mean, I think one. It's always going to be personal seven. too, but yeah. Mm. I don't know. I mean, do you remember the word now, dog? <laughs> no, that was it. It was your defining. You're oh, you're defining. Okay. I'm okay with that. The other option is saying something like perfect, but like, I feel like no, you're defining that's, that's says not. a little more, you know? Like, Put a capital D, please. <laughs> oh, <thank you. laughs> okay. Fine. Nice. So these are the okay. Let's go through the top half, right? right. Okay. This is an average song. This is a good song. This good is song. a would recommend song. Mm -hmm. This is an exceptional song. This is a year defining song. Like when you look back on twenty twenty four, these 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 are the songs I think of, mm -hmm. right? And then legendary. Legendary is more like a we should give out one of these every couple years, like maybe. Right, that's a big maybe. You're saying or maybe that once legend a year if we're lucky. You're saying that ten might never happen again as we do the podcast. Yeah, I would be fine with that. Dang. Okay, I you know Warren, what? I got a I got a question. I got a question. That that IU track from this year, right? Um, Love what, what number would you? Yeah, what would you give Love Wins? You're all? talking about is Love Wins All the ballad. Is it a nine or a yeah. ten? So it was in Your my opinion. example as a nine. Nine. See? Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. Based on our score. <laughs> but what's a ten? But what's a ten? Ditto by New Jeans. Ditto. For me, I agree. Like, I agree with that. Eyes, nose, lips is a ten. You had good day too. That's a I think, that's I think good day's song. a ten as well. Yeah. Mm. I agree. I agree with both. Now that I look at my example for nine, um, this eyelet magnetic, I would put it in an eight or I think I'd put it if I could an eight point five. No, I don't think it's a nine. I mean, really? I think I was the most um, lukewarm about magnetic between the three of us, and I would I would say yeah. it's it's a seven or an eight for yeah, me. So I'm between an eight or a nine. Um, all right, let's go to the depths of. of all right, that. the hard gets right. kind of orange and red. All of a how about how about zero? Zero also, we're so we want a normal distribution. Zero, we're never gonna give out. So not even a not even music. I think should be a, a, a zero. It would be very rare for us to even cover it. Yeah, exactly. Really. So it's not even music. Can we call it incomplete? Yeah. Yeah. It's not a song. Yeah, it's like not a. It's not a. It's not a song yet. You know. So and therefore we cannot give it a rating. Therefore it's a zero. Wait, okay. I don't see it like that. Oh, no? Okay. I don't see, like, if there was a song that's not complete, I'm not going to give it a score. It's, like... 
not a like NA. You know, and I, that's how I oh. would. Oh. Okay. So wait, what was the what was what was your proposal? My thing was like not even this, not even music. Not music. <laughs> 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 no, no, you know what I mean. Like that, this, this song, this thing is just has to be like flatulence, the album or something, right? <laughs> like <fast Okay>. that. <laughs> like this should not be given out. Like, I, like it, we're not gonna give this out. Realistically, realistically, if we're being very theoretical, it could happen once every couple of years. Yeah, really? I can. I couldn't even think of an example. Um, what did I what did I put as a zero? You did it. Actually, you gave three no, oh depths of you shit. You gave a range. <laughs> yeah, I gave a range of shit, and I don't think any of them would have been a zero. Like my lowest one, that that uh, nature rika rika. I think I would have gave a two because they tried. Right. It was just terrible. We can say not music, or we can say shit. Can, we, music, can we? not music. We can do a poop emoji. Okay, Anita. Okay, not no, <laughs> fine. <laughs> No shit here. Um, you want to do four first or one first? Four. Four. <sighs> Bad. <laughs> well, you wrote not good. I wrote not good. I wrote well, whelmed. <laughs> whelmed. You like that word. Whelmed. You like that word. Well, I like the alert word whelmed. I feel like that sums <laughs> up like it's not. It's not even average. It's like ugh. <laughs> like I a little ugh. To me, I feel like whelmed. Oh, that had more of a, like an average Same. connotation to me. Same. I feel like underwhelmed is like it's below it's below average. Oh, when Neil wants to do underwhelmed, I like underwhelmed. Okay, what's we'll underwhelmed? Yeah, because I mean, it doesn't mean it's bad. It's just a little underwhelming. Underwhelmed. All right, is it underwhelming or underwhelmed? The underwhelming is the the, the, the what you should yeah. actually right there. Okay. All right, now we're in the depths of shit, like Doug likes to uh, say. Man. How Which, about three is bad. That's bad. That's a bad song. I feel like three should be bad and two should be terrible. Like, you know what I mean? That's terrible. What the f is this? Like, Rika Rika for me. That's terrible. What are What are we doing there? Damn. I don't even. Re- I don't think I know this song. <laughs> it's you don't want to see it. You don't want to see it. They're, they're just hopping in a horse stable. It's it's really weird. Oh. Um. One. I think You're confusing, confusing. I had Why okay. I had one for, but I do want to pause for a second because for seven I had recommended, but the the mirror image of that is three, and for three I had a skip. Oh, oh like I would skip that song, you know. Actually, that makes more sense to me, and shift everything down. Yeah, skip. No, yeah, because if we think about like a normal distribution with a confidence interval, this is about the three is about the end of the confidence interval. You know what yeah. I mean? That's right? exactly what <laughs> yeah, I'm going yeah, for. Yeah. So like yeah, yeah. that way we oh. have five in the middle, six to Warren, four. You have to, you have to take one space away from terrible. I think it's too far to the, Oh, right. you're right. Okay. Um, yeah. Nope. Wait, that's, that's, that's the way it is for some reason. Really? Okay. I, I, that might be a four magnet thing. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, so okay. So if you do this, five is the stark middle. Six to six mm-hmm. five four is the middle range. Mm-hmm. Right above that sits seven, which is what we would recommend. Right below that middle range is three, which is what we're saying. You could probably skip the song. I wouldn't recommend you check it out. You know. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. below that is the depths of shit, but above seven is the skies of the blue skies. You know, like yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I kind of see like the most of the scores should end up between a seven and a three, right? Yes. Most of the songs should wind up there. Theoretically, yes. Theoretically speaking. Makes sense. This? I think this is fair. You like this? How do you feel Legendary, about Legendary, year defining, exceptional, would recommend, good, average, underwhelming, skip, bad, terrible, not music. <laughs> Not music. <laughs> not, not music. <laughs> I kind of. I feel like unless we have a f- unless we made zero something funnier like a poop emoji. I I but, like a poop but emoji. The, the problem is if we make it no. a poop emoji, people are gonna give it. That's the problem. No, no, no. Don't give it the emoji. <laughs> no, because then people are gonna people are gonna hate give it to certain things. We don't and we've encourage also, that. We've also told people on the server that 
um, when you see the scores and let's say there's a song that's just, in your opinion, an okay song and someone gives it a 10, feel free to ping them and say, why did you give this a 10? We want there to be some accountability in the voting. To defend. We want just be yeah, civil something. about it. Be civil about it. We want there to be discussion. Yeah. If I feel like there is an interesting bit of conversation on Discord, I might like ask you for permission to like pull that into the show. You know what I mean? Like, but if you like, let's say any, uh, let's say you're uh, okay. What's I don't want to piss anyone off. Let's say you're a zero base one fan and you're just giving them a ten, just just cause. And someone pings you and say, why did you give it a 10? And you go, because it's zero base one. Then you might get your 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 voting privileges taken away. Wait, don't, you, don't you, oh, you, no. can, you can do that now. You can do that now on, this, on the Discord. Um, I pray to God Doug never does that. But what I will say I'm gonna is... I'm going to go that, it, right? <laughs> here's what I'll say, right? Um, and this speaks to how I see the Discord in general. I, I see it as an extension of what we like to promote and what we think is good, which is healthy conversation and, you know, being there t as a safe space that's to talk about why you like something or why you don't. Um, I actively believe that being able to say why you don't like something is, is uh, that's also very productive as is the other way around, right? Um, mm. For example, I was very positive about the Gum Songs Day with uh, Yeonjin. I, I know I'm in the minority there. Um, I might have, if I was a random person on the Discord, I might have given it an 8. Uh, Doug, who might have also been another person on the Discord, might have pinged me and be like, hey, why the fuck do you think that song's an 8? And I would be able to, you know, like, maybe not ex elaborate on every little bit of why I think it's an 8, but like, you know, that would be a conversation starter, you know? like Yeah, mm -hmm. I want people to be civil, not say like, you're stupid, you're crazy, nothing like that. But if you're going to give something, like, let's say you're going to give a song a 10, you, like it's one of those things you need a you need a thesis as to why it's a ten. You know what I mean? Like you can't just be willy nilly handing them out, right? Yeah, I think it's also if a majority also says it's a ten, like I would want to know, like, oh, I want to know why everybody thinks it's that. Also true. Yeah. If I disagree, yeah. um, but it, like, yeah, it's all subjective, though. You know, you might think this is literally a legendary song, and if you just say I really think it's a legendary song, it is what it is, right? Yeah. At the end of the day, like. As much as po people will leave tens, there will also be a lot of people who leave zeros. So I mean, I'm hoping yeah. it cancels each other out a little bit. That's what I'm hoping. I hope, I hope so. Um, but I hope people don't just like not even listen to the song. And they're like, I don't like this group zero. You know, I don't think that's, that's yeah, that, yeah. That's not fun. Don't do that. And also, just saying with these emojis, you're good. Everyone's gonna be able to see who's voting for what number. It's public, by the way. It's just how the system works on Discord. All right, uh, let's wrap up this segment. Uh, what I do want to say is um, there will be a... Once we figure out the rating between the, th the three of us and the nation every week, um, I want to figure out a way to keep track of it somewhere. Um, originally, I was thinking about doing it on one of the sites like albumoftheyear.com or rateyourmusic.com, but I think that those platforms are a lot more album focused than song focused so that doesn't really quite work um i was thinking like maybe you could start a blog and just keep track of numbers or maybe you could put stuff on a spreadsheet somewhere like notion and you guys keep can look at it if you want um i don't know it just feels more fun and legit that way so um be prepared to go click on socialtalk.com or some shit like that in the near future do you think on our graphic here, Warren, we should draw a line between seven and eight and write like Hall of Spice on it? Oh, we Maybe talked we about that, that, didn't we? Because um, well, the we're we're planning on doing seven point five as the threshold for Hall of Spice. Seven point no. five for the threshold. Well, like then that the line would be in the middle, wouldn't it? Like, yeah. Like, Maybe kinda Maybe like, we should incorporate like that. that in the. Yeah, I mean, if I can figure out a way to incorporate it, I will. And it looks decent, maybe. Yeah, like, not this fucking stupid-ass... Little ass dash line. Dash, this pen line made in Microsoft Paint. I, I'll keep it in Comic Sans. I like Comic Sans. It's great fun. Do you think it's beat the, the area of white between 7 and 8, or do you think it's in the middle of the 7 image, 7.5? I think it's between 7 and 8. Oh, wait, I mean, if it's a 7.5, it's got to be in 7, right? I don't think so, either. <laughs> That's a discussion we could have behind the scenes. I, we will figure that out as <laughs> the content creators we are. But yeah, thank you. Okay, uh, that ends. So just like episode 298. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you guys next time.
Bye. Bye. Not even music. This is not even music. <laughs>